1984, I had one thing on my mind, right? It was a girl I was totally in love with called Nicola Francis. I was absolutely obsessed with her, right? Totally besotted by her. And just for a side note again for you, I saw her about three months ago for the first time in all those years. Lucky escape. <laughs> Manta. Manta. <laughs> The name of the show is a literal, it's a literal title, um, because I did fire some cheese balls at a dog, but uh, that kind of features at the beginning and then I uh, go on to talk about other things. But I was on holiday with my mate Marek and uh, we fired a load of cheese balls at a dog from a catapult. The dog wasn't hurt. And then it, uh, it really made us laugh and it made me think about, it made me think about uh, priorities in life. As strange and far-fetched as that may seem, it made me, uh, Reevaluate my priorities, fiery snacks in a dog's face. Before the cheese balls, uh, the last time I had some sort of epiphany was with the realisation that I should give comedy a go, because I was a teacher, a real teacher, a real one, for years. And uh, yes, I had a bit of a wake-up call one day and thought, well, you've always wanted to be a comedian, you should go and try that before you die. No, I knew I was officially middle-aged. I was in a shop called FC UK about three months ago. I shouldn't have been in there, Lucy. Look at the f***ing state of me, right? <laughs> but I was in there, and I was feeling pretty depressed about none of the clothes fitting me, me being too old for them, or too fat for them, or too tall for them. I was feeling pretty low. When I realised in the background there was a song playing from my youth, and it made me happy in an instant, right? It was a song by a band called Dead or Alive. Who remembers Dead or Alive? Yeah. What was their biggest hit? Yeah. You spin me round! You spin me round, Lucy. A 1984 classic <laughs> slice of high-energy gay pop disco. Do you know, I've never had a lot of heckling. I, I think because um, most, most hecklers are drunken, middle-aged men. And I think that they mistakenly might think, because I'm physically big, that I might be, um, you know, not someone to mess with. They're wrong, I'm just the worst coward. The best heckle put down I ever heard was, I can't even tell you the name of the comic, and I wish I could, because it was amazing. An old lady in the front row who was about, I don't know, in her, she, she wasn't an old lady, she was, about, she was in her 60s, and she obviously chain smoked, because her voice was like this, and she had a, a face like a prune. And she wouldn't shut up, and everyone on the bill had tried to get her to shut up. She was like, "Yeah, hey, get off, you you're rubbish. And this actor, I, I wish I could remember his name, but he came on, and uh, straight away she started heckling him, and he put his arm on her shoulder and he went, I know, I feel your pain. I used to dress up as a woman as well. It was amazing. It's a simple sentiment. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record baby. That's a music storage system. <laughs> <laughs> like a record baby, right round, here's the twist, round, round, right? Not Shakespeare, but it reminds me of a happy time, of a simple time, so it made me happy. The show is a, a, a sort of an, autobi an autobiography, but told in very specific terms. It is an attempt to um, try living in the moment a little bit more than I, than I was. It's, a, it, it's about relishing uh, times in life where you're having fun and just taking a bit of time off from yourself and thinking this silly thing's good. So it's a collection of positive, nonsensical events from my life put in a chronological order. I absolutely loved being on tour. I loved it and I'm amazed that you ever hear a comedian moaning about it because it's brilliant. You know, you drive to a town, you, you do your show, people come to see you, they're nice about it, you know. It's a great life, and I quite like hotels, frankly. Although, if you buy my DVD, um, there's a short film on it that me and my support act did at, at various gigs, travelling about. And, and I watched it back the other day, and it looks like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> it looks like I'm losing my mind. He was about 45 and he was angry because I caught him in the corner of my eye and his friends were going, go on, tell him yours, tell him yours. He was going, f*** off, f*** off. Like, go on, mate, tell us, only a bit of a laugh. And he goes, oh, f*** it, it was Mumbo, all right? And I went, OK, it's fine, it was a long time ago. Why were you called Mumbo? And this is how he said it. He goes, well, because apparently my mum's got B.O. <laughs>